Hi, my name is Nama, and I'm Assistant Nurse Manager here at Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi. Here today, we're here to talk about the role of transplant and what do nursing do and what is so special about our role here at Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi. I have here with me Leslie Dolphin, who's an OR nurse, works with transplant. I also have here with me Salwa Hashash, who's also a Senior Transplant Coordinator here at Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi. Leslie, uh, what is your role in terms of an OR transplant nurse? How does that differ from a regular OR nurse? It's probably more on the complexity of the case because if it's an OR nurse, we'll do the same routines and procedure for patients. But if you're a transplant nurse, the complexity is you'll, ha you'll be handling, handling more um, stressful situations, sometimes emergency situations, more bleeding than the usual cases. So if you are an OR, OR transplant nurse, you'll be more equipped, more prepared for those kind of situations to come your day. And yeah. How does it feel it. to work with patients who are actually got that nice phone call saying you have an organ ready for you and they're coming in and you're prepping them for this opportunity that is a life-changing one? What is your role as a nurse and what do you do and how do you offer that support for them? Uh, when we receive them in the prep area, usually you'll introduce yourself because you're a stranger. You have to really make them feel at ease that you're going to take care of them. So when you receive patients, of course, you feel the excitement, the joy. It's been a long wait for them and it's really a life-changing procedure. So for us, we try to make them comfortable all throughout the journey. While they're awake, it's a brief interaction compared to the ICU nurses that handles them a longer time. So for us, OR nurses really have to make an impression. So when you receive them, really make them um, comfortable that they're going through this procedure and you, they are not alone. And then eventually, when they awake, they will still feel the same comfort that they receive before sleeping. So you're like that touch to a new life, kind of like. Yes, That's nice. absolutely. Nice. Salwa, your role is very important as well as you prepare them and you're with them through this journey on that transplant list. What is what is your role in tell and how does that feel and what do you do and throughout that process? Can you tell us about that? So as a transplant coordinator, our role is one of the most crucial role in the transplant process. We consider the backbone of any transplant program because we are touching base since day one with the patient through all over the journey. It started with the pre-evaluation process, complete the evaluation, discuss in the committee meeting, adding them on the list, calling them and giving them the good news that we finally find for them a matched organ and the throw going to the OR and handle to Leslie and post-op after the discharge and it's a long life commitment with them. So we consider this, this type of patient is part of our families. Uh, you know, it's one of the most difficult and the challenging time and the confused time to understand what is the evaluation process because it's a lot of tests need to be done for the patient. And sometimes they did not understand why they have to go through all this process. For example, part of the workup is the dental clearance. Sometimes you find the patient is asking, why I have to go to the dentist while I'm going to have a kidney or liver or lung or heart? So you need to give the patient the explanation and and to convince them this is for their uh, safety. As all of us know, the transplanted organ, it's a weird organ from our body. And our immune system, uh, they are not realizing that we are putting this organ to help the body. So they start to fight together. So we are putting this type of patient on immunosuppression lifelong to be able to accommodate the new organ and to live safely together forever. So... With the immunosuppression, we need to be sure that the patient is clear. There is no any bad cell in his body. There is no any source of infection. So he will be safe through this process until we give him the organ and start the new life. Because the transplant is not only going through the surgery. It's a life long commitment. And one of my physicians always said, it's not a magic stick. So we will not give the organ today and tomorrow you will be fine. It's a long life commitment and the patient need to understand all this process. And honestly, if we put ourselves in the patient's shoes and we explained for them all of this, it's too much information. Sometimes it's confusion. And sometimes you will find the patient coming to you. No one told me. Yes, but I told you. 
Yes, but I did not get this piece of information because it's a lot of information. You have to repeat it. You need to receive multiple calls from the patient because you are the first point of contact for this patient. They don't know anyone else. So they are coming for you as a financial uh, question, with personal question, transportation, insurance. So if you cannot help them in answering the question, you need to loop them with the proper team that helping them in this. So you're just not only a transplant coordinator, you're almost like, it's like your family <laughs> member, kind of walking them through that journey and supporting them and guiding them to every individual that they need to make sure that it's a successful one for them. Um, you talk about getting organs. What options of organs, like how do they get them? Where where, where do these patients end up having them from? So there is two types of different uh, donation. The disease donor, whoever uh, patient uh, diagnosed as a brain death, and the family member agreed to donate the organs. And the second type of donor is the living donation. Living donation process, it's a little bit more complicated because this is a normal person, a healthy person, and we need to be sure that he underwent the proper investigation that we are sure as a medical team, he will go through the surgery safe and not even that. In the next five years, 10 years, 20 years, he will not have any comorbid medical disease related to his donation. So it's an extensive process. And for example, I will give you an example for the liver donor. So liver donor, there is a criteria to be able to identify I can donate part of my liver or no. So age-wise, PMI-wise, blood group-wise need to be compatible, and uh, health-wise, you need to be a healthy person. Once we have this initial information from the donor, we can start the process. As I said before, it's an extensive process. We do a cardiac workup, pulmonary workup, and image-wise, because for the liver donor, the two most important things that we need to identify if this person can donate part of the liver or no, it's the main two things, CT and MRI. CT, it will just convert the liver of uh, the donor to volume. So we will be sure that this volume is enough for the donor and for the recipient. The MRI will show us the vasculature and the pillory uh, system inside the liver. Is it safe to cut part of the liver to give to the recipient and the donor will be safe or no? The liver cell uh, got make it, it's regenerate. So after four to six weeks after donation, the liver will back to normal size in the donor and it will function 100%. And in the recipient will back 100% and it will functionally well 100%. So it's a little bit complicated and we are trying to explain it to the donors because, you know, waiting list, it's a lengthy time because no one can predict when we can find a donor for this recipient. So we are always advising the family member, if there is a living donor, it's a better because whenever the liver recipient, for example, going to the OR in a good shape, the recovery will be better and faster. So our role actually is a little bit uh, in the education side and reassuring because the family member, they did not know anything about the things. And whenever you tell them this, for example, if you have a mother and her son is willing to donate for her, the first thing she will say no. Because she don't know anything. She just don't want to harm her son. Mm -hmm. She did not understand that this is a safe process. And the team rule is to be 100% sure that this person will not be affected if he donated part of his liver. As a mother, it will be very difficult to take this decision to say yes. So it's not only to explain it to the donor, but it's at the same time explaining for the recipient and reassure him that don't worry, your donor in a safe hand and we we want to be sure that he's 100% safe and there is zero harm for him. Okay. So I feel like it's a lot of uh, involvement with really, really the role of nursing itself is educating our families, educating our patients, and really vouching and supporting them throughout that journey, whether you're a transplant coordinator or an OR nurse, a uh, transplant OR nurse. Um, I think that's very good to kind of highlight that we are very, we, we touch the patient and we touch them throughout that journey. Leslie, talk to me about what inspired you to be an OR transplant nurse. Actually, I'll be honest that I wasn't really planning to go into transplant. It's It was just like a leap of faith because people were like encouraging me to join. And then I got curious. And, you know, if you're a OR nurse, it's it's a good diversion from the usual cases because it's quite challenging. So I just 
went in and dive in and then I'm all here I'm all all out with the with the whole team and the surprising thing is when you're entering transplant it's like a different world compared to the normal surgeries like different surgeons different um pla- different way of doing things so you have to really unwire your OR brain to fit into that kind of complex surgery because you're not just preparing the patient you're also preparing the organs you're packing the organs you're um, doing the preparation before the organ is transplanted to the recipient patient so those kind of things you have to consider and aside from that of course the alive patient wherein you have to do patient care and the surgeon who demands your support and your care and your anesthesiologist who needs you also when the patient is bleeding or they need support during the surgery so transplant is not my thing but when you get in there it like it's it's very inspiring as a nurse because you feel like you gave a new life, a new organ to a patient that's been waiting for a long time. And it's not every day you meet those kind of people. You meet those kind of life-changing surgeries. So eventually through the years, I it's I felt it's a love-hate your relationship with it. So like in nursing in general, when you're tired, you hate it. But when the next day, when you're, you've are recovered, you feel like, oh, it's not so bad. I feel like I've changed someone's life today. So mm-hmm. kind of like that. <laughs> Talk to me about what is it like when you're actually in that transplant and the patient's receiving that organ. Like how, talk to me, walk me through what that is like. How do you know something went successful? What do you guys look for, you know, in the OR? Okay, so when we receive the organ from the donor, usually we'll do an organ verification, making sure that everything is safe, it's the right organ for the right recipient, the blood type is correct, and then they, the s- surgeon will usually prepare it on the side. There's a different table that's prepared for um, the benching. We call it benching table, wherein the liver or the kidney is prepared ahead of time, making sure it's properly fitted to be placed in the cavity of the patient so one nurse will assist in there and one nurse will circulate as well so this it's like two procedures in one room the benching table and the patient's patient's bed and patient's table so after the benching when the organ is all ready we'll we'll simultaneously do it with the um or table we're in we remove the old liver the not functioning liver first and then we prepare the cavity as well for the new organ to arrive if it's a kidney we usually don't remove the old kidney we keep it so we just put the new one in and for the liver once it's removed and you place it in it's like the most crucial stage of the operation it's like everyone's sweating already you know because we have like different stages in the anastomosis of the liver so in each in each stage you'll have different needs so you have to really memorize it you ha- you need to have a good memory for all the instruments and the sutures that you have to give to your surgeon because it's usually like pak 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 it's like automatic usually they won't say it they just ask you for it so you have to be really sharp you can't like be sleepy and you have to really focus 100 100% to an, Oh, uh, during the whole procedure if it's an eight hour procedure you have to be really with them unlike with other surgeries you can like have your brain sleep um thinking of some thoughts you know in in transplant it's not possible you have to be really 100 percent with them all the time so once um once we put in the new organ and once we did the anastomosis and once it's all completed the best part of transplant is probably um, for liver, it's seeing the bile, and for kidneys, it's seeing the new urine come out. It's like you're you've finished the race for the day, and it's everyone's happy after every, after a tiring day and after all your efforts for the patient. That's when you feel like you've succeeded for that operation. Thank you, yeah. thank you. So thank you for joining us. I think as the role of transplant in nursing and what we do here, it, it shows astonishing way that we can change lives, um, starting from putting them onto the transplant list all the way to actually getting them that transplant to even post management. So thank you so much. We look forward to seeing you again. Stay safe and thank you again.